the sheer number of, of things they need to tie together, the sheer number of cars and very, very large cars at that. Yeah. You know, and just how they were all gonna like work this together and kind of like make sure that the story works. I have to say that I am very happy with the final result. I don't think we could have asked for better or it's, even expected better. It's fact. so difficult to just the fact that this works. Like even if it had been a mediocre movie, that in itself would have been a gargantuan feat. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, just the fact that this works so cohesively, managing to uh, balance, uh, juggle a bunch of uh, moving parts, yep. servicing um, nearly all the characters. I mean, clearly not all of them are no. fleshed out or given full arcs, but everybody gets a moment. Yeah. And the Russos were very careful in uh, juggling all of that. And in pairing up characters with the people that they would have best chemistry with, yeah. in terms of like you know dividing the teams, it's not. A, it, it felt very thought out, like all the different ups that was happening. Well it felt true. Very, yeah. yeah, right. Like yeah. these guys were together because you know of certain things and mm-hmm. the chemistry that you know, was very apparent, mm-hmm. No spoilers, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> they didn't spoil anything. Yeah. <laughs> No, but uh, like, uh, in the end, after having seen it twice, the first time I was a bit overwhelmed. Um, I think shell shock is the word. <laughs> yeah, yep, um, exactly. I, I couldn't feel, like really Same. fully process all of a multitude of things that happened. But the second viewing did help a lot. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it went a lot smoother. It felt more cohesive the second time. Um, mm-hmm. This is one that is going to require multiple watches. Of course, Disney wants that because yeah, they need yeah. more money. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it's going to break box office records Definitely. anyway. Yep, um, yep. Whether it's going to catch The Force Awakens... Uh, we'll see, we'll see. It's a it's a fifty fifty on that one, but I mean the fact you come closer, I figure. I mean, coming close is a huge success. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And same company, whatever lah. I know, no, the 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 champagne is ready anyway. Yeah. Um. So Avengers: Infinity War, like who stood out to you, non spoilery? Non spoilery, I'll say Thor. Thor stood out to me. I mean, uh, okay, okay. The obvious one would be Thanos, lah. Yeah, of course. Thanos is the biggest standout in yeah. this film. I feel like I can say without spoilers that Thanos is your main character. Yeah, you yes. his I mean, we all know that Thanos is going to be yeah. play, playing a major role. Is he now. all he's cracked up to be after 10 years of the yes. season? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, my second favorite is definitely Thor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I mean, Thanos for me is definitely a standout, right? We've yeah. barely seen him. He's had a total of like two lines in mm. the last yeah. 10 years. Yeah, I think so. Right? And I think like the combined runtime of him on screen has barely been what? Two, hundreds? three, four minutes maybe? Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, there was that lo- uh, back in the day when uh, Avengers and Loki was like kneeling in front of him or something like that. Uh, yeah. The one that thrown. Scene. Yeah, I mean, yeah. The, that, that was basically kind of it. That's it, right? Uh, but an excellent, outstanding performance by Josh Brolin. Mm. I have to say, voice acting was great. The mocap great. was. Oh, the mocap was brilliant. So great. Uh, it puts uh, Stephen Wolf to shame. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Holy yeah, shit. He definitely yeah. does. This uh, was at the level of the Lord of the Rings you know, back in the day when they did Golem. Yes. Any circus? Yeah. yeah, circus, yeah. Or War yeah. for the Planet of the Apes. Or War yeah, for the Planet of the Apes. Yeah. It's definitely up there. Uh, the I emo really... thing that he does with his face. Oh, fantastic. It's great. Yeah. It's, great. Yeah. Like, it, it's a fascinating character study. I think this is definitely the first time we've seen Thanos live action right mm. on the big screen. And I do for like... For an extended period. For an extended period yeah, of time. Yeah. And I really, really do like Brolin's interpretation of the character. Mm-hmm. I think it felt very true even though they did divert a great deal origin wise and, yeah. and, and, and yeah. story that's fine, wise from that I mean uh, the comic origin is too convoluted anyway yeah uh, that's yeah. And, and his reasoning for wanting to wipe out half the universe is admittedly a bit silly um, in the comics yeah. um, they grounded it a lot uh, yeah. added a lot of pathos and gravity yeah. uh, gravitas, gravitas. To, to what he uh, to his motivations yes. yeah. um, I really felt for him in the same way that I felt for Killmonger in the sense yeah. that he's a zealot with good intentions just going about it the wrong way yeah. but he comes he was from an extremist lah Yes, yes. He yeah. ca- but he comes from a place where uh, we all get where he's coming from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was definitely a great something. I don't even think you need to look out for it because it's it's mm. so stellar. Yeah. it is really, really that stellar. Um, yeah. the the thing that stands out to me the most is the tonal juggling because um, mm. how how would the Guardians of the Galaxy fit with uh, Wakanda and yeah. how would that fit with uh, Tom Holland's Spider Man's vibe yeah. or Iron Man's vibe or this, vibe. The, the seriousness of Captain America? Yeah. Um, and I f- I think that like. The tonal juggling worked really well. When it was Wakanda, it felt like Wakanda. When it was Guardians, they felt like Guardians. Guardians, correct. Um, all of it was just seamless in the sense that the Russo brothers put a lot of uh, care yeah. into presenting the characters as true to their original franchises as possible. Mm, that's true. So it's not something that James Gunn would be like, ah, Star Lord wouldn't say that. Exactly. You know, uh, Star Lord would say that. Yeah. Um, in fact, actually, most of the Guardians lines were written by James Gunn. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. And the, the humor is uh, you 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 notice it when you. I mean, watch it. I felt that 
uh, I felt a lot of the humour from like the Guardians especially was very ad mm. Like, it felt like there was a bit of improv going on. I mean, which was already apparent in the first two Guardians really. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. He, so, know. it felt like they continued that tradition. Mm. So, that's why I felt the authenticity of the Guardians. Yeah. Even though they were the considered the newest kids. No, the Black Panther guys were the newest kids on the block. Black Panther, Doctor Strange were all new. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Um, Doctor Strange's uh, dynamic with uh, Tony Stark, I think the tension between them was um, the the best interplay for me la, in the movie. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but everyone else's interplay was really good. Mm. Um, from old characters who haven't met each other for a long time yeah. to new characters meeting each other for the first time, they're all fun, they're humorous, but at the same time, there is a sense of uh, desperation towards yeah. the end of the movie where uh, I've never felt in any of the Avengers movies before. Exactly, yes. right? uh, with Guardians or Avengers, whenever there's a big threat, whether it's Celestial or whether it's Ultron, yeah. um, there's always a levity to it. Uh, and uh, an assured sense that they will make it out okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but the further along Infinity War went on, the sense of desperation grew more and more palpable. Yeah. I, I felt breathless, la, like, how are they going to get out of this? How are they going to get out of this? It felt very desperate, it felt very. Uh, it was dark, it was necessarily it was dark. dark. Yeah. And but of, it wasn't DC dark or gritty, it was mm-hmm. just. It's, it's the MCU dark. It was it's, heavy. It's it was heavy, heavy, yeah, yeah. It was heavy. Uh, And one of the occasions where I felt that the Marvel humor was. Uh, uh, was sorely needed uh, to kind of break up the heaviness Which they did, once uh. in a while. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God. Okay. All right. Um. The, our non spoiler review. I guess we're gonna end with our ratings. Like, how would you rate this? Uh, for a movie that we've been waiting for, you know, forever, I'll give it a out of five. Ah, uh, yeah, sure. Out of five. I'll give it a four point five. Uh. Yeah. Um. I'm. I'm giving it a four or five. Okay. It is a, a top notch Marvel movie that um, sometimes feels like it can crumble under the weight of its overstuffing mm. yeah. uh, but it for the most part works it uh, and that in itself in itself is something to applaud it's something uh. miraculous yeah it's a 4 or 5 for me It's it still falls below I mean just my personal opinions I think Winter Soldier is the top still, still yeah uh, that's a 4.8 for me I still rank movies at Civil War and the First Guardians slightly, slightly above better, so. yeah. uh, but this is a top 5 movie for yeah. sure I, I rank Black Panther above as well Oh yeah, definitely. Me yeah, too. so this is a top five movie yeah. for sure. This I feel is the same ranking for me as Thor Ragnarok. Mm. That level. Yeah. Okay. What about uh? Well, um, I'll give it a I'll give it a four point five, and I think I largely agree with what you guys have to say, but for me, I'm giving it such a high rating because not only is it a good movie, mm-hmm. right, or even we, we can say great movie, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's just the sheer juggling yeah, know, and right? the audacity of the idea itself yeah, that astounds me. You know, and it's definitely a must watch. I'm I'm sort of giving it full marks because I feel that yeah, some it, things that could be improved. Yeah, for sure. But how much can you actually exactly. do? Yeah. You know, when you're trying to tackle something like this, you know. But there there is no there is no perfect movie. I mm. guess it is it is a lot of movie, uh, and it's paced as well as it can be paced. Exactly. Like. I mean, it's a two hour forty minute movie. Yeah. Yeah. And it didn't feel like a 2 hour 40 minute movie. No, I mean, from the onset, and we were talking about this, mm-hmm. uh, about how it felt like an entire third act. Yeah. yeah. From beginning to end. It's a 2 hour 40 minute climax, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, if from the second uh, we meet Thanos on Thor's ship, which is the very first scene, so yeah. we're not, not giving it. That's not really a spoiler. I mean, like, yeah. Norok really covered it. And plus, you kind of saw it on, in, the, trailers. Uh, on the trailers. Yeah. Um, from that very moment, all the way to the end, right, it just felt like a gigantic third act. Mm. M- multitudes of third acts. It felt like four different movies were having a third act at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yep. You know. But somehow, seamlessly, still, you know. It, it worked, quite well. it worked. It worked. And that's the yeah. thing that really, like, for all intents and purposes, it shouldn't. Yeah, um, you know? major crossovers, even in comic books, so rarely work. Exactly. Yeah. If you've seen lately, like, especially lately, all like new Avengers, stuff, remember that shit? Oh, uh, wow. Or even, you know, like, we talk about Infinity Gauntlet, which oh. was a, a wild idea. It, um, it, was, it was a good idea. Great idea, but not so brilliantly executed. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, this, I think learns on mistakes of the comic book crossovers. Right? Yeah, yeah. I thought that too. Um, for, for me, Marvel has always... Um, it, the way it adapts comic book adaptations um, uh-huh. or the original storylines, it tends to improve upon it. Yeah. 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 Civil War was a great improvement. It was a, it has the moral complexity that yeah. the co- um, comic books never Couldn't had. Couldn't really, yeah. 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 Infinity, Infinity War had the sense of loss and desperation and gravity that Infinity Gauntlet didn't have. Didn't really yep. capture, yeah. Sure. I yeah. agree. For sure. Yeah. And they did it in a, in a single movie in 2 hours and 40 minutes yeah, yeah. that's a fucking impressive feat yeah. yeah so it's it's 2 4.5 and yeah. 1 4 or 5 so clearly we all in love we all love this movie, movie yeah. uh, so alright f- yeah, yeah we, we're gonna move on to the spoilery spoiler alert spoiler alert yeah uh, spoilers incoming in like 3 2 
one. Okay, spoilers. Spoilers. Alright. The fucking ending, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Such a bold move. <laughs> Such an incredibly bold move. When, when uh, you read reviews that say this, this is the Empire Strikes Back of uh, the Marvel Universe, uh, you get I what think, you mean. Yeah. Uh. yeah. And we, it deserves that... that, that, that. That uh, title uh. Yeah And this time It's like You know It's not just someone Getting their un- arm cut off Or being frozen <laughs> <in carbonite. laughs> They I fucking mean, disappear 50 fucking percent Of the universe Disappeared Including Most of our, the next gen heroes Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, all, Almost all of the new All of the phase, Almost all the new gen guys Phase are three gone. people are gone Black Panther gone, gone. They, had the, they had the most Audible gasps In the cinema yeah. Because you're such a Commercial success You see Exactly right? uh, yeah. so, all, all the hype yeah. um, Spider-Man uh, Had the most emotional I think Of, of the farewells When he was Yeah uh, he was just Holding on to Tony Yeah um, he had, he, Tom Holland plays uh, Little Boy Not Wanting to oh, Die Very very well He did that in, 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 oh, in Homecoming as well When yeah. he was under the rubble If you oh, remember man, yeah. that, that brought a tear to my eye And he was saying like You know sir I don't want to go That yeah. kind of thing uh, it's, it's brilliant man. Oh, and yeah, all, all the pairings towards the end, uh, Rocket with Groot, Rocket with um, Groot. Uh, Cap with Bucky, all, all the major Rocket pairings. disappeared also, right? No, no, Rocket, was, no, Rocket, Rocket, Rocket had to watch Groot disappear. Groot disappeared. Yeah. 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 Um, what were the stand-up moments? I mean, they're genuinely a hundred, a hundred like, spine-tingling, mm. like, pump okay. fist in the air moments. Okay, what, what for, me, la, for me was basically, Groot, I, I already said it, it's Thor and uh, Rocket. Right? Yeah. Right. When the they were in the ship, when they were having the conversation. Half comedic, half dramatic. It was romantic. comedic, and then slowly it got dark, and it got yeah. sad, emotional, and then he cried! Yeah. Thor cried! And I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna cry too! Yeah. And so, yeah, when, 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 I mean, that moment when he realized that Thor lost everything. Mm. Yeah. Like, everything. Yeah. It's, it's those little moments in the middle of, of such an action packed movie where characters have to consider what they have lost including yeah. Thanos to be honest yeah. when, when Thanos loses Gamora, Gamora. And, and he has to reflect upon I mean he lost his home planet also la. his home planet most of his children yeah. uh, he has to reflect on the toll of his uh, of his conviction yeah. Uh, yeah yeah exactly yeah. Um, so when he's trying to explain to Doctor Strange his backstory what the what today has extracted from him mm-hmm. um, you felt the sense of gravitas too la. Right? similarly that you fought with Thor or you fought with any of the other heroes same I agree um, I, I felt like Scarlet Witch and Vision had a nice little arc there that yeah. he included you know a little love story thing. Yeah, yeah. That was that's cute. Okay. For me moments wise, yeah. the opening couple of minutes is great. Oh because yeah, that too. Whenever you bring in a being who is more powerful than you can ever imagine. And and so many superhero stories struggle with this. So so much mm-hmm. enemy struggles with this mm-hmm. is how do you establish the power scale? Yeah. Right? And immediately yeah. you see Thanos beating on how. Yeah, yeah. You know. overpowering him, playing with him, playing with him. The first, uh, yeah, the 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 just the little punch to the throat. Yeah, and that heart was fucking shocked. Exactly. <laughs> uh, he followed that up by killing a literal god. Yeah, uh, Loki, choking yeah. him out uh, uh, in front of his brother. In front of his brother, who's also a god. Yeah, you know. So I uh, I really really felt that was re- that was very very important to set the tone for the entire movie. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that they did it early. Yeah, because a lot of the time you they you would wait for exposition first before you kind of establish that. We had ten years of exposition, bro. That is true. Eighteen that movies is true. of exposition. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so, we we saw what uh, how it can turn convoluted like Justice League when they were trying to explain. But Justice League never ever laid the groundwork. Yeah, they didn't mm-hmm. have. They, go, they, they, were, they were trying to reverse so they had to like franchise. they had to exposition 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 yeah. mother boxes and Stephen Wolf and yeah and yeah all that crap right so the good thing is about Thanos is he didn't have that burden yeah. we already knew what he's going to be about mm-hmm. we see him beat up the Hulk mm-hmm. okay yeah. let's this, move on this is um, a true in the true sense of the word uh, a TV season finale yeah. um, being played out on the big screen yeah. Yeah. and the Marvel Cinematic, Cinematic Universe for better or for worse has always played out like a TV show Yeah. and I think most of the cinema reviewers who maybe do not like the Marvel Cinematic Universe mm-hmm. um, bristle at the fact that it's, it's run and it's structured like a, a television program yeah. uh-huh. um, the downside to Avengers Infinity War is right it doesn't work as a standalone film oh no definitely you, you not you just can't, can't yeah. there are a lot of reviewers who are you know professional film critics yeah. who watch this you know thinking it's going to be a film film it doesn't work <laughs> as a film it, yeah. it's, it's not a, a movie it's, yeah. a, it's a climax it's, a, it, it's it in no way or form like yeah, you can't digest it yeah. without knowing, without having any foreknowledge. I mean, that's why the resonance is gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but that's why uh, Marvel marketed as you know the ten years thing, like, yeah. You know, they have all the cast coming together. They have their their marketing has always been centered around. You have to watch the previous movies to get what this mm. movie is going to be about. You can't come into a season finale having seen maybe two or three, two or three episodes, episodes of yeah. a show exactly. and expecting to to get all of it, lah. Yeah. Um, this one is for the fans. This one's for the hardcores. The one. The ones that have been there since day one, like, yeah, or have caught up. So uh, there were some people that, uh, some of my friends who only watched 
like three Marvel films all together like yeah, yeah. Maybe just Civil War, maybe just... Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, if, or, or just purely the Avengers film. So if you fall in that bracket, you're probably not going to like it. Yeah, you might find... Uh, you'll be missing a lot of things. Uh. Mm. Yeah. Mm, yes. Or oh, the weight of the deaths, you know, Gamora's death. Yeah, uh, like you don't Loki's care. Death. You wouldn't care. Yeah, I mean, Loki didn't need the big moment because he had already had all those big moments yeah. and the relationship with his brother had already been established yeah. and the fact that they just recently reconciled uh, in yeah. Thor Ragnarok but if you didn't watch the previous film you have no idea what the fuck is happening yeah why should I care that Loki died right? yeah or Gamora who's Gamora who the fuck's Gamora yeah, yeah. Oh, why, oh, why, why is Gamora <laughs> why <guy>? is Gamora <laughs> uh, why is a purple guy beating a green guy yeah, yeah. Yeah. I have had some complaints also about the fact that the heroes made a ton of mistakes in this one uh-huh. and they, they almost heralded their own doom um, but they were all moral decisions yeah. or yeah. emotional decisions yeah. that were all very understandable yeah. the Doctor Strange and his time stone giving away his time stone uh, yeah. yeah giving away the time stone or Captain but that one I think is a bigger plan yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or Captain America refusing to sacrifice Vision because of course Captain America you would not sacrifice the life. Captain America he, it, he doesn't it, see Vision as an android he's obviously making the tactically wrong decision yeah. like Captain America will always make the morally right decision that's why we love Captain America yeah. exactly yeah, it good. would have been our character if he if said, he like okay oh, yeah. yeah let's just kill Vision let's just like, kill Vision I mean that will solve so many things but that's not the point yeah okay Yeah. at which point did you start rooting for Thanos? After he killed Gamora. Mm. Weirdly enough, there was supposed to be the moment that like, you were supposed to turn on him, right? But yeah. like, him crying and his grief at, uh, yeah. at having to uh, sacrifice, sacrifice his daughter. His, daughter, yeah. his favourite daughter, the one that he legitimately loves. Yeah. 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 Like, he saw his, uh, he saw like, his vision, right? Yeah. Like, his, his goal at the end is, okay, I need to do this because I need to save the universe. Salvation, yeah. Salvation yeah. of the entire universe. Uh, a culling. So I have... You know, so the opposite of Captain America. Captain America, you know, saved vision. Yeah. yeah. He's, at, a, he's a humanist. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the risk of the entire universe. Yeah. While Thanos is like, okay, I'm going to kill you, mm. but that's because for the greater good. That kind of thing. Mm. Like. Mm. Yeah, so I, I don't know. Captain America has never believed in the greater good. He believes, he believes in good. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, that particular scene for me, right? That, <laughs> I that don't one, get a problem that with one the solitary tear... <laughs> Oh okay. Is, is, yeah. Oh, but I mean, like, okay, like we just had that discussion after yeah, watching yesterday. it, right? And about how, like, that scene is so great yeah. that it was unfortunate that Zoe Zal- 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 did not this... nail her yeah, gloating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If she had nailed that gloating, it would have been great. Yeah. But just what happens after that, yeah. right? And and the moment he turns around, that that to me was mind blowing. Yeah. Because rarely do you have that kind of emotional resonance with something that's so obviously CGI yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. and like that that was mind blowing for me uh, yeah. and at that point I was like oh man okay sure yeah have, I mean, have some sympathy now. <laughs> I mean I having seen uh, War for the Planet of the Apes and prequels and stuff like I know what they can do with CGI and mocap yeah. uh, with guys at any circus uh, but it's uncommon for superhero movies to have uh, CGI, CGI characters be this expressive. Yep. Yeah, I mean, agreed. coming off uh, Justice League, obviously, uh, uh, we were all very disappointed by Stephen Wolf's uh, design and yeah. CGI. Remember that guy? Oh, God. Oh, yeah. um, Oscar Isaac, one of the best actors of our generation, just what the fuck? hidden under like a ton of makeup. Yeah. Know? Also purple. Also purple. Also purple, yeah. 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 But they didn't allow him to do his thing. Um, the Russo brothers allowed um, Brolin to do his thing. True. Yeah. Like, true mm. the scenery. Mm. So great, so great. Such yeah. great scenery chewing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I just love the the delivery, you know. Like despite everything that happens, despite all that he's lost, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Thanos seems resigned to his his destiny. Yeah, yeah. He's resigned to his destiny and therefore will achieve it whatever the cost. Yeah. Like in the in the trailers when he's talking about uh, dreaded run from it, destiny still arrives. It 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 sounds like a threat, but uh, when you watch the movie, it isn't a threat. It is a one. It is himself resigned to it. Yeah. It it, it is his destiny and it is his sacrifice. Therefore. Yeah. This guy is really one of the greatest Marvel villains. I think it, you have to say he is the, the greatest Marvel villain. He is villain. the... I mean the MCU lah. In the MCU In the yeah. MCU, no. I mean that's hands down. Hands because, down. Yeah. Like, in, in, in com- comics canon, Thanos is a joke. He's yeah. a moron. He's a joke. He's powerful. And but, the one yeah, but his greatest powerful. weakness is that all these fails at the last point. The last yeah, he sabotages himself, yeah. right? Yeah. But this, for once, right, the MCU has turned that on its head. And, and he, then, he gave him a happy ending. And gave him a happy ending. Yeah, he when was he was sitting, sitting down and looking at the sunset, what he wanted to do la, after he um, snapped his fingers. Thanos is the closest thing this movie has to a protagonist, which yeah. is 
the most surprising thing although I mean I did kind of predict it lah, yeah I mean like, you predicted it to be a heist movie focused on Thanos getting the rings uh, the, 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 the stones. stones but at the same time when it did happen I was still surprised lah. Yeah. I was like wow you guys did it yeah, it's not just like you guys did this movie, but you guys did it in this fashion. Yeah, and a fashion that actually makes sense because yeah. how else do you introduce all these characters other than Thanos encountering them as he's getting the stones? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Not bad. Uh, yeah. Fantastic stuff. Um, I um other stuff that stands out to me. Um, Iron Man's armor, his nanotech. Um, mm, really, really, really cool. Spider Man's nanotech armor also. The Iron Spider. Iron Spider suit. Uh, one of the best uses of the Iron Spider suit I've seen. Yeah. I, I yeah, prefer sure. this color combination than the The original color. one, yeah. For sure. But I mean, like, in, in the comics, Peter barely ha- wears it for like... Twice only. He wears, it, he wears it for one public appearance. Yeah, and then he, one more time when he was fighting... I mean, when he defected. Defected, right? Yeah. And then, like, that was kind of it. So, like, this is the first time we've actually seen the Iron Spider suit in action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so, which is great. In a very different context, somehow. Yeah, um, Cap's blacked out, blacked out uniform. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is really cool. His yeah. new Wakanda shield. Man, um, uh, his blacked out uniform reminded me of a bit of like you know US agent. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I I do think like a bit of a like US a, agent like kind a, of thing. A, a reference to that. He's, he's yeah. meant to be either US agent or nomad, right? Yeah, like you know, not Captain America. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, for those wondering what happened to Hawkeye or Clint Martin and Scott Lang, um, uh, they house are arrest. house arrest. Yeah, clever. They were. Uh, it was kind of explained away in throwaway line, yeah. but we will obviously see more of them in Avengers Four. Yep. I mean, there were going to be things that you had to throw away, la. Like the yeah. the, inf- the the invasion of Xander and all that. Yeah. The destruction of nowhere. Oh, cannot. You know, no time. As, as we say in wrestling, like, they've been dropped out of the pre-show. Yeah. Like before the movie even started, they they already were like, "Hey, uh, we destroyed that place. We got this stone." Yeah. yeah. I'm curious to know whether or not those things were shot and had be left on the cutting room floor. I mean, it comes out in the extras I mean, that we do. Knowing it, the Russo's, mm. right? This movie is originally uh, supposed to be a lot longer. I mean, and I can understand why. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So I'm curious to see whether that will come out with the DVD. But uh, both films have been filmed already, right? Yeah. Both have been. Avengers 4 is done. Yeah. Uh, Russo's are saying Avengers 4 is going to be a lot longer than this. It might be the first three hour movie. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Avengers 4 is the true culmination of uh, the MCU of Phase 3. Yeah. Um, this is more like an episode 9 of Game of Thrones. Yeah. Uh, and episode 10 will be... This is like the Battle of the Bastards kind of. Yeah. yeah and, much. and we don't even know what the title of uh, Avengers 4 is. Yeah. They are, they're keeping it very tight-lipped. Um, they have they are going to skip Comic-Con uh, this year and next year. What? Uh, because oh, they, don't, they don't want to announce any future titles. Because clever, it, clever, clever. it's going to give away sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, if they announce Spider-Man 2, if they announce um, Black Panther 2, for example... Then that does mean nothing, lah. Yeah. So I mean, clearly we all know there is going to be a Black Panther two and a Spider Man two. Oh, definitely. But just the fact that they are playing it close to the vest means that they don't want to give too much away, and yeah. they want to have a level of suspense, lah. Yeah. And so therefore, increases the the magnitude. the rights, lah. Uh, the rights, the the, the magnitude of Avengers fall. Uh, of of the loss of the sacrifice. Yeah, of the sacrifice. Um, yeah. if you notice towards the end, only the first gen Avengers survive. Most uh, of the, the my, I mean, the prevailing theory, at least mine, is is that the first gen Avengers will have to sacrifice themselves, themselves. to bring the next gen Avengers. It's a, a passing of the torch kind of sacrifice yep. in the next movie. Yep. Yeah. Uh, can't wait. Uh, we'll see the follow up to this uh, in Ant Man and the Wasp. Yep. Uh, and then of of course in the post credit scene, uh, Cap- Nick Fury calls Captain Marvel before he is departed. Yeah. Uh, an intergalactic pager. Yeah. Yeah. Because nineties, ma. 90s <laughs> but 90s got no colour pages bro yeah, but, yeah. but I guess maybe she'll got colour pages yeah lah yeah. it's yeah, the galactic mark they, they, they have advanced uh. let's make a colour pager yeah I'm um, yeah. really excited I'm really excited for Captain Marvel actually mm. I think again it's going to be one of those things mm-hmm. uh, Feige has said she's going to be the most powerful character they've ever had in the MCU yeah uh, at least on the hero side la. yeah on the hero side uh, it's, it's, it's going to be fascinating because every time you it's a cosmic hero. Yeah, yeah, every time you in- introduce like an Omega level or like a cosmic level character, right? It's always problematic. I just realized that Captain Marvel is the one that put Iron Man in the coma. Oh, yeah. In, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in the comic. Yeah. 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 Uh, last couple things I want to mention. Um, this is Peter Dinklage's biggest role to date, literally. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. We'll uh, leave it at that. Uh, keep an eye yeah, on that. Yeah, we're looking forward to a, a, a lot, obviously. Uh, Captain yeah. Marvel is going to be great. The last thing I want to mention is, and this is a small nitpick because yeah. I love the movie, but the end there when uh, Nick Fury caught Captain Marvel, it really felt like a slap in the face to the, uh, the MCU TV division. Yeah. Um, it really felt like fuck you, Coulson, fuck you, Daisy. I don't, I don't even care. He got no time, you see. He got no time, like he got maybe, no time. yeah, maybe he can just send like one message. Yeah. Let's, let's call the most powerful. Yeah, of the us, most powerful one, lah. Yeah, I know, I know. I mean, even though we love agents and we love those guys, yeah, they are Captain Marvel, man. They are, uh, they are a bit outmatched, <laughs> like, in this yeah. one, uh. Uh, and I'll I'll give it to them. I'll give yeah. it to them. All right. Um, 
unless you guys have anything else to add. No, I think we love the movie. I, I think you need to watch it mm-hmm. to kind of understand. What the hell we're talking uh, about? I I think that you need to watch it more than once. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you need time. You need time to mull over it. I'm not sure if we've actually had enough time to mull over it. No man, uh, uh, it's gonna need at least one more rewatch for me. Yeah, Same, a couple yeah. more rewatch for Aisa. And yeah, stuff. I need one more. I'm on two also with you. Oh man, uh, I, I'm probably gonna rewatch it more than twice, lah. Uh, yeah, uh, this is so much to digest. I mean, it is ten years, you mm-hmm. know. So, uh, I we don't know. We we might still be talking a bit about this, like yeah. <laughs> next month. So we'll see. We'll it's see. it's gonna be a long. A long one year wait for Avengers 4. Yeah, uh, let's yeah. just say that. Um, we're gonna move on to a really, really innovative um, horror movie uh, oh, uh, called oh, The Quiet Place. Oh, I love this. Yeah, um, yeah, directed, co written, and starring John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Um, a Quiet Place is like such a simple yet expertly constructed exercise in tension building. Mm. Yeah. Um, to me, like um, sound design always plays a crucial role in horror. Yep. But this movie's use of silence to evoke discomfort Oof. and to accentuate like you know a nervous alertness yeah. is it, like a whole other level. Uh, it's kind of to me like it's like a mix of like Buffy silent episode hush yeah. uh, and a comic McAfee like post apocalypse mixed with like the creatures from Tremor the the sense in the sense yes. that they have like you know the one missing sense but their other senses are elevated yeah um, yeah I mean the, like long stretches of this movie was just dead silent to the point where every minute sound like plastic rustling a straw going to a drink the snacks guy being next chewed, to me breathing yeah. yeah it felt so loud and distracting la. Um, it was just the silence it drew your attention completely into uh, the movie la. like I mean like for example you know when the lantern was hit over the by the kids playing Monopoly yeah, yeah. it felt like a bomb going off it know? did yeah. Um, yeah I, I adored A Quiet Place what, did you guys uh, love it as much as I did yes, oh my god I did. Uh, I John Krasinski did. was on four main yeah Emily Blunt also Emily Blunt. actually the four of them actually, all four of them were great the kids did great but I have to say I loved Emily Blunt's performance me too her physicality is yeah, yeah, it, it's really insane I think her playing this pregnant woman you know mm. in that desperate like you feel her desperation sorry yeah. Yeah. it's crazy you know? it's, it's crazy, crazy. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. in particular one sequence I wanted to highlight was um, the sequence when she stepped on a nail oh, oh. Uh, yeah. le- leading up to her water breaking and then oh. having to hide from the creatures and then giving birth oh. in a bathtub just this compounding sequence of events and just nice as the fireworks go off then she screams yes oh. um, then I've never seen a compounding sequence of events in a recent horror movie that uh, ratcheted up the tension so much. Right? Yeah. Didn't your heart just palpitate a bit harder and faster? Oh gosh, yeah. And Emily Blunt's physicality in that, uh, like yeah. I've seen a lot of birthing sequences in films. I've yeah. never felt the pain that much. Uh. Yeah. I mean, like not, none of us will ever know what it's like to give birth, uh, but I felt it. Uh. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, it's never gonna happen, bro. <laughs> it's not junior. <laughs> No, you can put on those things, though, the okay. stimulation thing. Oh, yeah, no, no, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, it's all, right. it's all right. Yeah, let's not do that, lah. Yeah. Uh, do, do you guys have, like, any other thoughts about a quiet place? Uh, I like all the arcs the characters took, like, yeah. from the kids. Great, great you know, uh, character development. Yeah. Uh, they start They start out with the sticks with very no regularly. dialogue. With barely any dialogue. Yeah. Right? Um, excellent acting by the kids, especially, I felt. Like, even though you were annoyed with them, they were like, oh, these guys are good. Mm. And plus, she's a real deaf actress, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, I mean, that, that again, representation. Yeah, yeah. that's a win for representation. But she did, she did exceptionally well. Mm. You were annoyed at her, but you kind of loved her performance. Um, at, at, at the same time, so both kids had understandable motivations. Yeah. Uh, even though I mean, teenagers in movies and pop culture in general are just meant to be annoying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but at, at least, it we, at least we kind of got where they were coming yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, it worked. I mean, you could. Except for the first kid that died, like, in the beginning, lah. Like, that's he, tough. He, he, that's. That's his fault. He totally had it coming. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah John, John Krasinski had that look like, oh, if your mother wasn't here, I would even chase after you. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking boy. Um, yeah. Oh, well, if you haven't watched the movie yet, uh, there is a kind of like a do his ex machina thing. Yeah. Uh, which was something that I wanted, uh, I kind of want to talk about. The, um, the oh, the hearing aid thing. The hearing okay. aid. Uh, I was a little annoyed with that mm-hmm. because I thought it was way too convenient yeah but I think they also recognized that it was way too convenient yeah but that's why they made it it was conveniently there and then it was conveniently not yeah and then that became like the entire thing yeah like how she didn't realize that it was her that was causing it exactly Mm -hmm. Uh, and I thought that okay I mean like if if you recognize that it is the duo sex marketer right and you lean into that in the way that they did yeah I, I had to give it to them in the end yeah. Even yeah. though at the beginning I was quite annoyed by its appearance. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, like, I, I guess in conclusion, like, I really admire the continuous ominous dread maintained with minimalism. Like, yes. Yeah. Uh, which is really great. Um, the I mean, acting is terrific. Set pieces are masterful. Creature design is really, uh, really awesome. On form, though. Its internal logic makes sense. You know, it the does. family works on, on sand and other variations. Yeah. Of and they kept to it silent. throughout the entire movie. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And it never broke. And even the family drama aspect of it is quite painfully affecting. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess A Quiet Place to me succeeds on nearly every level. And I, I, mean, I loved it. Yeah. And John Krasinski is a director really steady hands like really mm. um, captures really really good uh, classically constructed right? horror yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Right. for a guy who didn't like horror before this yeah, yeah. yeah but I think people who are exactly scared can make hot, better horror movies. Yeah, because they know what they know what can trigger. You. I mean, he did do ton of research, lah. Yeah, before the film. Yeah, then, but don't you keep expecting to see John Krasinski just look at the camera? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know. Office uh, quite place mashups on the internet. <laughs> it will be uh, fun. Yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. Yeah. Um, I think to me, right, it's not because there was that one episode where they were playing the yes, quiet game. Quiet yeah. game. <laughs> Um, to me, like it's, it's not yeah. quite as good as the other "Just Shut Up and Keep Quiet" movie, "Don't Breathe," but oh, it's, it's damn close. Though. It's close. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Don't. But I, I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I feel that I it's prefer "Quiet Place" than "Don't Breathe." Mm. I love "Don't Breathe." Yeah. I mean, first of all, Stephen Lang is a fucking phenomenal actor in that. Mm-hmm. Oh man, he's so. Scary. Oh Jesus Christ! You were f- a blind guy. You were scared of this blind guy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, outstanding. Um, how would you read yeah. that? Yeah. Quiet Place. Four five. Yeah. Four point five. Four point five. Like quite easily, I would give it. I would give it that score just based on the sound design, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. brilliant. <laughs> Yeah. Or the lack of sound design. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> no, silence. Silence, yeah, silence, silence is sound a sound design. design. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Silence has to be constructed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, true, uh, true, true. I'm going up to a 4.5. This is the opposite of 15 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll give you a 4.25. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're all. We in that range, right? In that range, right? Yeah. 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 Um, but oh, it's a highly recommend. Highly recommend. Ooh, high. Highly, yeah. highly recommend. Uh, watch it with a respectful audience. Try mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite hard. If you want, you go in the morning. Yeah. Watch it in the morning when no one is there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but very few times we have to like instruct audiences to like uh, for timings so as to watch movies. But I think this is quite important. <laughs> yes, yeah. this is. Yeah. Uh, try and watch it on your own. Yeah. But please do watch it in the cinema. Yeah. It's really, really important that you. Do. Yeah. Because only in the cinema can you get this kind of like that silence. Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. Um, and now we're gonna move what on to, to um, this is a bit weird like, because I think since the first episode of genre equality we've kind of. Accidentally mentioned Atlanta nearly every episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think you can tell. Like kinda, accidentally on purpose. On pur- yeah. Uh, we, you can kind of tell we're just like dying to talk about Atlanta. Yeah, and we can. And we can we because can. They, they recently delivered one of the best episodes in the show history. Yes. It's a horror episode called Teddy Perkins. Teddy Perkins. Uh, what an incredible oh, episode of television this my was. God. Um, Donald Glover's script was like. Mesmerizing and his transformative mesmerizing performance yep. as the title character was incredible. Um, Hero Murai's direction definitely used the horror movie tropes in service of a riff on the lives of you know um, yeah. black artists like Michael Jackson and Stevie Wonder and other other black musical icons, of course, yeah. who have suffered great personal loss on the way to recording some of the greatest songs to have been written. Yep, um, that is actually the crucial thematic question of this yeah. particular horror set piece, la, Whether the songs were only possible because of those losses. Yeah. Um, you know, like Get Out was kind of released a few months after Atlanta season one ended. Ended, yeah. But I can't help but feel like it might have inspired. This inspired, yes, episode. definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, first of all, FX. This, I mean, we were. I mean, we watch it without commercials anyway. Oh yeah, I mean stuff like Legion right? for the Americans. But so. FX like purposely made this a commercial free episode. I uh, didn't give you relief from the tension. Yeah, yeah. And then it was a forty-one minute runtime. Yeah. And like, that's really you know like do du- like, double. Double whammy, like, okay, this is going to be special, right? Yeah. And when you watch it, you're like, huh, Donald Glover, you God fucking damn. fantastic motherfucker. God damn, this is Donald Glover trying to do his own version of a nightmarish tale starring <laughs> Keith Stanfield, yeah. who wanders into a palatial home where black men are turning white. <laughs> um, there's even a moment where Darius is stunned by an uh, unexpected camera flash. Yeah. Um, although the result is quite different from Get Out. Yeah. Um, Stanfield is amazing as Darius. Uh, yeah. It's the, he's weird, but he encounters someone someone even weirder. Even weirder than him. Um, and then he becomes like a bit normal already. Yeah, yeah. It's admittedly like... Uh, I, okay, like the, in, in broad strokes, it's similar to Get Out, but yeah. thematically, it's, it's very different. Uh. It is. Um, the, make, the makeup... I mean, there was a comedic element... Oh yeah, yeah, I mean, not, I mean, uh, even Get Out also had lah, but yeah, but Atlanta is more of a comedy. Yeah, uh, but dark comedy lah. But sometimes w- this particular episode, the comedy kind of took 
a side seat, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I kept expecting for the other shoe to drop. Like, when can I laugh? When yeah. can I laugh? Couldn't and then, right? And then it get it kept getting darker and darker and darker to its very like tragic conclusion. Yeah. Uh, did you manage to catch this, Isa? Oh no, I'm not caught up with. Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, but uh, this. Sorry, I'm spoiling it for you. It's gonna be the the, the, okay. the highlight, okay. the okay. highlight of the season yeah. for sure. Um, the makeup job of Donald Glover is obviously meant to evoke uh, Michael Jackson. You yeah. Know, with the talk of Teddy's reclusive brother Benny Hope suffering from mm-hmm. a skin condition, it kind of recalls Jackson's unconvincing attempts to insist that his transformed appearance was vitally go. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, plus his old story of an abusive father. Yeah. You know, we pick him, we pick his talent into shape. Uh, yeah. It's oddly reminiscent. Or, but I think me personally, I a lot of people have been pointing out the Michael Jackson reference. Yeah. But for me, it's more of a Stevie Wonder reference. Oh. Uh, because he he's it's more representative of him lah. Um, much like Stevie Wonder, Benny Hope it has a name very similar to Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, yeah. Uh, it's it's a combination of both. But like, how I can tell it's more of a Stevie Wonder um, allegory is that the beginning song and the ending song were yeah. Stevie Wonder songs. Ah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I actually like I I uh, one of the scenes that really freaked me out was the ostrich. Egg the scene. ostrich eating eggs. Yeah. Oh, God what damn. the fuck was that? Yeah. I mean, okay lah, it added to the whole... Yeah, but Teddy Perky, oh man, everything was brilliant about this episode. I don't know how to... I don't know how to really review this episode, except it, it, that you hard. have to watch it. I mean, the the only thing I can say is that this is... Okay, this episode of Atlanta is horrifying, Yeah. but it is the happiest I've ever seen watching Atlanta, just because I am so impressed by how artistic Donald Glover right? is, you know. Me too. Like how the show can be so hypnotic, so confident and it's, so surprising. Yeah. Um and it's 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 standard is very high and very versatile even by Atlanta standards. Yeah. Atlanta is known for doing very offbeat episodes. Yeah. Uh but even I didn't think that they could have done something like this. Oh man, it was a fantastic thing. God damn, right? Yeah. I mean just watch it lah. Like everything. The acting was great, mm-hmm. the tension building was great, mm-hmm. the fucking scenes just Everything just like fit la. Yeah. I don't know how to explain. Just so you have to watch it. Yeah. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. Okay. Robin season is be- is going great. It's been killing it, right? It's been I mean not it. that season one is bad or anything, but like no. this is taking it up to yeah. a whole new level. Yeah, exactly. Um FX in general, if you're not watching Legion as well, you should. We'll you should. be covering yeah. that at the end. At the end. Mm-hmm. Uh but from now we're gonna move on to a couple of CW shows that have Yay. had their finale. Um, the first one is A Tale of Two Halves. Uh-huh. Uh, Black Lightning. Black Lightning! Black Lightning. Oh. Um, l- let me kick it off by what I liked in the beginning. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah. you both who have dropped out can talk about why you dropped out. Okay. Alright, Black Lightning came out hot. It yes. was it was literally one of the best pilots I've seen this year. I mean, yes. I, I was hyped for it after watching the pilot. Um, in, I think it's the best pilot of any of the CWW. Definitely. Shows. I mean, you had uh, very relevant social issues mm. being uh, represented. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you had a great uh, main character. Oh, fantastic, yeah. Right, with with a great uh, backstory. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, to me, it felt like a little bit like Luke Cage, by the way, of Blackish. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Yeah. That's a great way to describe it, yeah. Yeah, like showrunner Salim Akil, his extraordinary vision of like the superhero show that's socially Centered conscious. Centered around a family. Family, but yeah. also socially conscious, yeah. politically relevant, and makes yeah. no apologies for the depiction of African-American experience. Yes. Uh, it, was, it was pretty refreshing at first. Um, Supergirl... And it also deals with a lot of political allegory, mm-hmm. but there are no allegories here. Yeah, it's, no. It's, it's, it's like clear cut. It's, it's direct. Like, this is yeah. what black people face every day. Every day right? yeah. uh, black Lightning's mature take in the beginning uh, on police discrimination and gang violence. Yep. Um, two different groups intent on destroying black youth in very different ways. Yeah. Uh, was, to me, was very powerful and always. It, 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 Added me, to the atmosphere. Like. It elevated the show yeah, beyond did, the other did. CW shows. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, black Lightning felt essential at first. The maturity of the show was so different. Especially the pilot. Yeah. Um, as the show went on, it showed glimpses of genius here and there. Um, the storyline of the government secretly dosing the black community with chemicals to make them docile mm. was exceptionally powerful yeah, and very was. potent. Mm-hmm. Um, the show is, is just chock full of smart and powerful ideas, but where it fails is in the execution of those ideas. Yes. The costumes, the fights, the dialogue, the character dynamics all felt cheesy and poorly thought through. Um, it felt you, very CW. Do you, you, you guys agree with me as yeah. the show went on? It did. I mean, uh, like I felt... Okay, the only issue we, is why we feel this way, right, is because we can compare it to, you know, the Marvel TV uh, superhero shows, uh, right? From she, Agents to Luke, Cage. to Luke Cage, you know, to the Netflix guys, uh, right? Yeah. And how their character design and how they tackle gritty... Uh, socially uh, awakening topics, right? Yeah, or like Punish and Jessica Jones. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Where, and and that kind of tonal yeah. difference and yeah. 
And yeah lah. So Black Lightning it started well. Mm-hmm. But then it became this this very weird middling ground. Yeah. Where it could never commit to being a CW show yeah. or whether it was whether it wanted be... to go gritty. Yeah. But it didn't it didn't get the balance right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it felt off for me. Admittedly, the first season of Legends of Tomorrow was quite terrible as well. Same. And it yeah. ended up being my favorite show, so yeah. I'm going to so give it yeah, a chance. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I will definitely catch Black Lightning when I got more time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have, I have, as the show went on, I had issues with a lot of the acting, especially from the daughters. Um, does Isa feel the same way? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think it's not just the daughters themselves. I'm just tired of the acting. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I really, really am. Uh, some of the lines are getting like a bit, a bit cheesy. Okay, with, with, for something that started off so great, Mm. Right, it got really bad really fast. Yeah, in my opinion. Okay. Right, and uh, I don't have time for that. Yeah, man. I Same. really, really don't have time for that. Yeah, so I agree. So I will hop back on the bandwagon, right? If it picks up again, yeah. You know, I like. I, I, I so like wait for his to watch lah. I I <laughs> like what they're doing. I like the way that it, that I envision it going okay yeah. but right now execution is poor in my opinion and I really don't have time for that exactly um, before we move on just a fun fact yeah. the show taking over Black Lightning yeah. is the 100 oh. no <laughs> wow <laughs> right because uh, I saw that like, the morning, like uh, Black Lightning season series finale, uh, season, season finale, finale next week the 100 like, oh my god the 100 won returns, uh. yeah the 100 <laughs> won Black Lightning lost to the 100 it lost his time slot oh uh, that's fucking hilarious uh, I I don't know whether they did it on purpose but it's really funny but it's not they lost the time slot like, it's just they're changing no no I mean right? changing like, yeah. like, obviously Savio is a long running show called the 100 yeah, the 100. it's been there from way before Black Lightning like 5 seasons it really? just so happens that uh, the major gang in Black Lightning is called the 100 the 100 so, uh, so yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just thought it was really funny. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was. <laughs> uh, moving on to a show I wholeheartedly love. It's This is the only show this month, I think, I'm giving a 10 out of 10. Which is? Fucking Legends of Tomorrow, man. Ah, I haven't caught it yet. Right. Um, what re- happened? Recently, DC's Legends of Tomorrow got some viral buzz just with the concept of a giant telepathic gorilla trying to murder a young Barack Obama. Yes. Yeah. It was the kind of bonkers setup and undeniable hook that would have felt perfectly at home in a Silver Age comic book. Yeah. Um, and that's ex- exactly the kind of aesthetic that Legends of Tomorrow has been pulling off for three seasons now. Yeah. Um, for the people who have kept up with what is easily the most consistently entertaining show on the CW's entire superhero stable, mm-hmm. this was just another episode. And it wasn't even the craziest thing in that episode. Yeah. The episode's nastiest stunt was the Legends recruiting actor John Noble mm. by going to the 1999 set of Lord of the Rings yeah. so that he can impersonate the voice of the demon Lord Malice, uh-huh. who is also voiced by him in the show. In the show, yeah. Uh, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, and it was because the Legends were watching a DVD of Lord of the Rings and they realised that he sounds exactly like Malice. <laughs> They just happened to be doing that. And that that's, that's just one episode of the show. I know. The Barack Obama thing was like the third, the C story. Oh, man. Um, it, it, if all that sounds ridiculous, it's because it is. La, and that's what makes Legends so delightfully watchable. Yeah. Um, the show recognises that it's silly and it embraces that fact. Uh-huh. Uh, giving the writing a confidence that you sometimes don't see on the arrow or the flash. Yeah. Where they kind of have to have some broodiness yeah. or melancholy here and there. Yeah. Legends knows what it is la, and it, it embraces that. Yeah. Um, the MB- this, this is what I mean also la, when yeah. the show embraces what it's supposed to be exactly yeah. but it takes a while to yeah. put in of, even, of even Legends Legends had a shitty first season yeah. um, the undisputed MVP of Legends is Katie Locks who plays Sarah Lance uh-huh. uh, oh, love she, her. she's amazing uh, She. this is the other show that has her drop a fun quip at the start of every adventure like mm-hmm. for example this week we are on Obamacare and, wow. and the other characters will comment on whether that quip was suitably empowering. That's the kind of show that it is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the sort of lightheartedness makes the stories feel more grounded and the characters more human. Conversely, the heavy brooding on the that other show... That was such a weird line, but okay. It is, it is. Because yeah. like it's relatable because you would joke at this. At yeah, this, yeah, at this yeah, like, yeah. It's aware of what it is. Conversely, the brooding on the other shows makes it hard to take them seriously. Because Cause you're it's, so cheesy. A, it's a CW cheesy show. Yeah. Why are you acting like this is Infinity War? <laughs> exactly. The stakes are, the stakes are different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's bonkers and it's breezy. Um, they have episodes about um, saving Helen of Troy yeah. from exploitative Hollywood executives uh-huh. by sending her to mascara to train Wonder Woman. Uh, they have an episode where they help Elvis Presley fight poltergeists with a magic guitar. Makes sense. Uh, they fought occultists in Victorian England with the 90s R&B classic Return of the Mac as the soundtrack. Makes sense. Mm. Uh, they stop Vikings from pushing an adorable Tickle Me album. Oh, I, I watched that episode. Uh, Stuff toy called Bebo. Bebo! In fact, Bebo appeared a lot this season, especially what? in the season finale. when uh, Bebo the, became the world religion, right? Uh, no, uh, the Legends of Tomorrow, they conjured a Voltron version of Bebo to fight the giant Lord uh, Malice ah. in a Voltron fight. But it was this giant like teddy bear fighting an actual demon lord. Bebo. 
That makes so much sense. And and this was after they had a high noon showdown in the Old West with Jonah Hex against Julius Caesar's Roman Legion and Blackbeard's Pirate Gang. What the it's, fuck? It's, it's that kind of show. Uh. It's it's a bit like Doctor Who, you know, staying light as often as possible, but not backing down when things get dark. Mm. Uh, because, you know, if you've seen the... Yeah, people die. The peop- um, specifically when Stein died. Yeah, Stein died. Uh, it was quite an emotional moment. Ooh, that, that was, that was a, a bit undercut by Jax's bad acting. Yeah. Yeah, he had an ugly cry face. Yeah. Uh, I'm so sorry. It wasn't a good ugly cry too. Yeah. Um, this show was recently renewed uh, for a fourth season, bringing the beloved DC Comics anti-hero and NBC castaway John Constantine into the fold full time. Yeah, he's gonna join uh, Wally West Flash, who also has joined the show full time. Thank God. Uh, oh. So it's kind of become, picking up all these like C-list characters from all the other shows and making them a main character. Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is great. Which is great because yeah. both of them deserve to have a show. Yeah. Um. The se- the extended season is wrapped up. It should be on Netflix soon, or it's on Netflix now. So please catch up if you can. It's easily on CWs. DC's best show. Okay. And uh, speaking of John Constantine, John Constantine recently had a, a short animated, animated series, series? Uh, over a on CW, CWC. It's an online series. Um, um, Hadi and myself have caught it. Maybe Hadi can uh, break it down a little bit. Uh, we don't spend so much time on this. Just that. Yeah. Uh, in es- it keeps to the essence of the comics. I feel. Mm. Uh, John Constantine plays perfectly. Yeah, Matt, right? Matt Ryan is a great John Constantine. <laughs> brilliant, yes. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, altogether, I like the the very simple storyline. You know, saving demon, I'm uh, saving girl from demon, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, animation, great. Yeah. Right. Um, easy to watch. Easy to it's watch. Short. It's like six minutes. Every episode, episode is about six to seven minutes. Yeah. Um, five episodes have had so far. Yeah. There'll be seven more later this year. Later this year, yeah. Uh, I think all together, all put together, is probably gonna be a 40, 45 minute thing. So it's probably like just one episode. One episode, like, yeah. yeah. Just broken up, uh. Which is fine. Yeah. I don't mind. Um, uh, I I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think now we're gonna. Okay, we recommend I'll recommend this? it. Yeah, yeah, I'll recommend this as well. Cause it doesn't take much of your time. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. yeah. Watch it. Since we're on animated, let's move on to uh, the return of ISIS Enemy Corner. Yay! Yes. So every quarter. What are we talking? Been... What are we talking? What are we talking? Okay, so today I think what we're gonna focus on is uh, everyone's on Netflix, pretty much, right? Yes. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about the excellent curation of anime that's currently on Netflix. Yeah. Nice. Uh, we recently posted something on our Facebook page. It mm-hmm. was an article by Uproxx telling you for the like the ten best anime to watch on Netflix right like now. Like this, this spring. Uh, yeah. this coming. Yeah. Uh, so I I went through that list uh, uh, because I was gonna talk about it anyway, mm-hmm. and I kind of realized that uh, a lot of the anime that's on that list. Which is a great list, by the way. Yeah. Uh, you should definitely check it out on our Facebook page. Um, is uh, has to do with a lot of old classics, mm. right? Uh, but there's a ton of stuff that um, Netflix has been snapping up, and they've got these deals with uh, uh, animation studios in Japan where they bring it straight to that. Mm. That have been really, really good, or at least some more recent animes that I would like to recommend. So uh, I'm not gonna go too much in depth, but okay. safe to say. Uh, any kind of story that you kind of want, right? Uh, Netflix has, has one of the best anime for that right now. Okay. Right. So uh, let's start. Give me off. a list. Yes. <laughs> Where the list? The morning, sir. <laughs> okay. So yes. uh, just because um, the their respective third seasons have just come in, uh-huh. I'm gonna highly the top of my list is gonna be My Hero Academia. Ooh, Ooh shit! We right. all love My Hero. We um, love it. We've been we've talked about, we talked about this in our very first episode, mm-hmm. right? In the very first anime corner. Yes. Um. Now just starting to the third season, which has been fantastic so far. Four episodes in, one yeah. of the best uh, recap episodes I've ever seen in all of. If television. you have not yeah. seen season one or two episodes, just watch one, it. season three. Recaps episode one. it quite brilliantly. All the yeah. character dynamics, all the rivalries, uh, who hates who, who loves who. While well, having a swimming tournament. Yeah, while well, having a swimming tournament. <laughs> Which is insane. Yeah. Which is totally mind blowing given the sheer number of characters that they have to cover. Yeah. There's like twenty characters in the main class. In the main class. And all that have been quite reasonably developed. Like yeah. 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 And and they had to cover four arcs yeah. in yeah. the span of twenty minutes, which is mind blowing. Mind blowing. I mean obviously Deku and Almighty's arc, but at the same time, um Bakugo has become almost a secondary protagonist, yeah. although you kinda hate him. Yeah. Uh yeah. Todoroki is also really Todoroki. really uh Todoroki and Bakugo are the two main ones that you follow. Yeah. 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 And uh, apart from Deku. William the the pervy little kid was the main guy yeah. in the first episode. Oh, yeah. 
great shot. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So I would really, really recommend that. Also, if you um, have not, you're not into anime and have been thinking about a way to get in, uh, My Hero Academia gets a stamp of approval from all three of us. Yes, uh, and it is on Netflix. Both season one and two are on Netflix right yeah, now. That's true. And uh, it's it's an easy watch. It's it easy is. to get in, and it's very easy to to enjoy yourself with that. It's fast paced. Uh, it's not like Attack on Titan or anything. It's oh very yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to Attack on Titan later. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, okay. I have stopped um, watching that though. Yeah. yeah. Food Wars, or otherwise known as Shokugeki no Soma, also yeah. recently just went into their third season. Okay. Or, oh, well, technically it's a continuation of, of, of the previous. Of, the pre- uh, of season three. Yeah. Uh, it's also on Netflix. Apparently, for a long while, they only had the Chinese dub for it, which was really strange. Mm-hmm. Please, don't, please don't watch dubs, guys. Ooh, okay. <laughs> just yeah, yeah. generally. Right, uh, so it's um, if any of you have watched uh, Cooking Master Boy or any kind of like cooking shows that the Japanese have done anime wise, right, you're gonna love this. Uh, it has just the right amount of cheek, just the right amount of like ridiculousness when it comes to that. So basically, you have um, cooking school students who have to fight each other on a grand scale. Think, mm. um, not Master Chef, uh, Master Chef Junior, not even Master Chef Junior. What's the Japanese one where he buys Iron Chef. Iron, Iron Chef, Chef. yes. Right. Oh. Exactly. So it's basically like Iron Chef every other episode, which, oh. is, which is pretty phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. Uh, some of the no most... classics, yeah. Yeah. Some of the most tantalizing animated food I've ever seen. Okay. Right? Uh, it never fails to make me hungry. Oh, uh, I love it. And apparently, oh, uh, uh, we found a blog of uh, a guy who's been trying to recreate every dish oh, that's from nice. all the episodes, which is pretty interesting as well. Okay. So I highly recommend that. <clears throat> yeah, um, maybe I can like jump in a little bit. And yeah, go ahead. Tamba, Tamba. Yes, Tamba. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Batman Ninja recently came out. <laughs> I just watched the first time. Uh, uh, Batman Ninja is... Oh, I'm just going to lay out a premise. Uh, while battling Gorilla Grot in Gotham City, Batman is caught in Grot's quick engine time displacement machine yeah. and is sent to feudal Japan along with the rest of Arkham Asylum. Edo period, right? Uh, but because Batman enters the portal slightly later, just a couple minutes, he arrives a few years after the villains have already taken control of 16th century Japan. Uh, each of them carving out a territory for themselves. Yeah. Um, now is it as cool as the trainers make it out to be? That's like a brilliant premise, by the way. It is. It is. Right. The 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 anime starts hot. Yeah. It's, it's uh, incredible. Um, is it as cool as the trailers make it look? Yes, it is. It's okay. wholeheartedly Marvel fucking red, la. Okay. Here are the pros. It has absolutely stunning character designs by Afro Samurai creator Takashi Okazaki. Yeah. There's that of- manga vibe. Manga vibes offering yeah. completely unique takes on uh, Batman characters and villains mm-hmm. uh, and their mythos. Its action sequences are frenetic, breathless, and stunningly stylized, like beyond compare. It's Ooh. pretty very cool. Okay. Now here comes the con. It's incoherently messy. Yeah. It's <laughs> unbelievably silly and not in a legend's way. Yeah. Just really stupid. Yeah. Uh, midway through, it gets so fucking weird. Uh-huh. And it just barrels from scene to scene in nonsense fashion. Uh-huh. That I couldn't wait for it to end. But at the same time, if you turn off your brain and just enjoy the gorgeous visuals, you uh-huh. can, can kind of dig it lah. Okay, I, I'm definitely I, watching this. I advise you to turn your brain on and just soak in the amazing art. Yeah. Because although it's indeed silly, it's goddamn spectacular. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just watched the first five minutes before we started this podcast and I was like, yeah, this is quite amazing. It's a six out of five, so it's soft recommend. Soft mm-hmm. recommend. Yeah. Okay, got it. If, if you love, like, great animation and great sound design yeah. and great soundtrack, like, it's worth watching for those things alone. But if you're in for, like, a story, then no. Other than the premise, like, it's pretty rubbish. It's literally yeah. on the screen right now. Oh. Oh wow! Yeah, Hardy was watching it. Yeah, Hardy was watching it. Uh, anything else or from? Oh yes, uh, Violet Evergarden, which is one of Netflix's first kind of. Uh, is that original? Yes, it's a uh, Netflix original, uh. Uh, and it talks about a former child soldier who turns into um, this thing they call auto memory doll. So basically, she helps other people write letters. Uh-huh. Right, great, great animation. Um, some of the best animation I've seen in an in an anime series actually. Mm. Like it's it's. It, it's like movie standard it's like your name standard or like even Ghibli standard like animation soundtrack is great uh, story starts off a bit slow but um, by the last episode I was bawling it was very very good wow. uh, very highly recommended on myself okay. especially if you prefer um, to watch anime that isn't uh, you know centered around like superpowers and things like that mm-hmm. uh, pacing is it, pacing is good pacing is, is is very chill and that's what I kind of en- I enjoyed about it sweet uh what else? Uh, of course, Devil Man. We've already talked about that before. Yeah, uh, second episode. Second episode. Yeah. yeah, and um, they snapped up quite a few like good, uh, 
films as well, right? So you got Gantz, which has some of the best um, 3D renderings of Japanese cities that I've ever seen. Okay. Mm. Yeah, because I remember watching that just after we came back from Japan. Yeah. And uh, there's certain scenes that are set in Osaka, and it felt like I was walking through those exact same streets. Uh, we walked the exact same streets that are in the movie that says, nice. and I was pretty blown away by how good that is. I agree. Gantz is uh, um, how many seasons in the series? Yeah. Uh, seasons? Okay, this the Gantz Zero that is currently on Netflix, Netflix. is the movie. It's the movie, gotcha. And uh, it's not the live action movie. Mm-hmm. So it's what an happens? Anime on, movie. Yeah, the live action movie of Gantz was uh, like it was kind of a flop, like it did very poorly in environment. So they actually redid the entire story. In, oh shit! In in three D, which is which uh, is quite mind blowing. Cool. On, on that note, do y'all see the Beach trailer? Uh, the live action? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. Me too. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. After like, full, the, the, the shenanigans with Full Metal, I... The Full on. Metal one was better than I thought it would be. Yeah. You know? Really? Um, kind but of I have never really seen a good live action, action adaptation. adaptation. adaptation They're like closest anime. for Samurai X. Like the closest to mm. a good one. And, and at the same like, time, like, it was like short for short. Right? Yeah, it was yeah. short for short for so many things, right? And even yeah. then, it didn't... It didn't, didn't have that same impact. No, it didn't. Sorry, yeah. Uh, yes, another um, film, if you just want like a short binge, is Blame. Uh, Blame? It, it's spelled as Blame, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, it's, um, it's the studio that did Knights of Cydonia. Oh, it's the, shit. It's the same studio that did the Godzilla um, anime. anime that we recently That trashed. we didn't like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, we'll, we'll update you when the second half comes out to see if it... Because it's not out yet, right? No, it's yeah, not yeah, yeah. It won't be out for a while. Yeah. Um, but Blame is really, really good. It's about a post apocalyptic world whereby the automated robots that we used to uh, construct our cities are now, are now uh, autonomous and uh, have grown sentient and that's all they're doing. So they're carrying on building cities. So you uh, humans live in the fringes of a giant city that, that no supports one no one. Wow. Right? And uh, it's great. It is really, really That's an interesting something. premise also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's an easy watch. It's like 90 minutes. It's very, very good. Okay. And... Um, I'm what just else? gonna say that like eight out of ten anime that they have right now on Are Netflix good. is is worth a watch. Okay, you know, so long as the subject matter kind of appeals to you, whether you want sports anime, um, volleyball yeah. with high for example, or, or basketball Kuroko. with Kuroko basketball, uh, or even free, which is about swimming. Yeah. Um, all of those things are great. You want nice. superhero stuff? You got superhero stuff. One Punch Man, please watch. Uh, oh yeah, it's, it's also, on Netflix. It's also on Netflix. Yeah. Mob Psycho, also by the same author, is also on Netflix. One Punch Man is coming back out, right? Too. Uh, yes, we should be expecting a summer release for the new season of One Punch Man, yeah, which yeah. we're extremely excited. That'd be dope. For. Uh, yeah. So I'm just gonna wrap that up, and I'm just I just want to shout out to the guys at Netflix who are curating the anime section. Yeah, good but stuff, man. Really, really good stuff. I mean, it's not the latest stuff that's going on. That's fine. But what they've curated so far with the past catalog and what they are currently doing, yeah. uh, with the originals is like kudos to them. Really, yeah. uh, I think they're doing a a big big thing for anime and like spreading that uh, mm. across the world. Okay. Nice. Um, speaking of Netflix, um, I'm gonna let Hadi and Isa talk like for a short while for five minutes on their latest remake of a 1960s series called Lost in Space. Oh, yeah. uh, oh my god! Those younger might remember the Matt LeBlanc horrible movie. Um, okay, I know you'd say it's horrible. I loved it though. Well, I, I, mean, I loved it then. Then, yeah, I then. then. But I rewatched it recently. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe I like this. Uh, <laughs> let's just say that this new Lost in Space is a lot better. Yes. Than that. Um, I'm 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 gonna jump into hard hits late. Uh, sorry, quick hits. Uh-huh. Why did I say hard hits? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, wrong podcast. Wrong podcast. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm every gonna, week, you know. Every week. Uh, I'm gonna jump into quick hits later. So I'm gonna do like a multitude of shows. But, okay. So I'm just gonna let you guys uh, take this for a bit. Okay. What do you think of the new Lost in Space? Lost in Space. Okay, wait. First of all, what a fucking brilliant production. Oh my god. Quality, right? Yeah. So um. That that was kind of the thing. I wasn't I wasn't gonna watch it. Like yeah. it wasn't very high on my list. I was gonna get yeah, it yeah. in my time, but uh, I came home and my brother was watching it. Right, and I was like, "Whoa, what show is that?" Right, yeah. right. Because the production the set design, the costumes, right, the CGI is yeah. phenomenal yes. for a TV series. Like I don't think it is comparable or even better to what we saw in Altered Carbon. Yes, easily. Yes. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Right. Uh, the whole aesthetic of it is very two thousand and one Space Odyssey. Yeah. You know, I, I loved every part about it. There's like uh, some retro futuristic kind of design, which yeah. I really, really like. Which I really liked. Yeah. Um, of course, the premise isn't new. Cause no, it, it is they're lost in space. They're yeah. lost in space. <laughs> uh, but I have to say, it's, I mean, the acting is really good. The set design is really good. Uh, uh, it's it's yeah. it's darker and filled with more complex characters than the original Lost in Space. Yes, yes. yes. More, a lot more characters because there are a lot more survivors. Uh, yeah. One of 
uh, Parker Posey's best role as a villain. As a villain. Yeah. As a vill- uh, yeah, she currently plays a villain. Yeah. And one of her best roles to date, I think. I mean, since Blade Three, lah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you put it that way, right? Uh, yeah, but really, really impressed uh, by that. Uh, I again, I think it's the young stars that are doing very, very yeah, well. Yeah, the, the kids, right? I'm doing very yeah. well. Uh, very interesting take on the robot concept. Yeah, as well. very, very yeah. strange and alieny instead of campy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like I, kind of like the, 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 um, so the robot's origin story is also pretty cool. Yeah, if you haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it it gets a oh, it's not a soft recommend. No, it's a hard recommend. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, like if you've ever seen the the, the Matt LeBlanc movie, or if you've ever watched the original, the original one, Lost in Space, uh, yeah. this remake supersedes both of those. Yeah. yeah. I agree. And, and and easily so. And also they changed the family dynamic also. They did. Bit, yeah. Right? They did the, the, the the father is, you know the the father is a, is a veteran who just recently is a Navy yeah. SEAL. Yeah, and and his seal. his distance from his son is quite uh, nicely explained. Yeah. Uh, you kinda understand both points of view. Yeah. Yeah. Uh very nice. Uh for me in particular, if you like uh another show about people stranded, this this Lost in Space is more similar to Lost than it is with Lost in Space. Yes. Yes. Because of yes. its flashback structure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um so if you like Lost you'll probably like Lost in Space. Yes. Yeah. That is uh most uh But though no, I have to say that the plot is a lot better structured than Lost. La. We'll see lah. Lost had a pretty structured first season. Until the last two seasons. Last three last seasons. Last season. The last... Season 4 and 5 were my favourite of Lost. Really? And 6. I was so six confused. Already. Oh well, oh, Lost is a... It's a different podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah Another yeah. one. Uh, maybe we'll, we can like recap Ocean. Recap Lost, yeah, 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 yeah. One of these days. Alright, I'm gonna jump into um, a little segment called Quick Hits. Yes, where I quickly recommend uh, various movies or TV shows that if you haven't seen, uh, you should definitely watch. Or maybe you shouldn't. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give my recommendations or disrecommendations. What's your first one? First one is Unseen. Ooh. Uh, shot entirely on the iPhone, iPhone 7. 7 yeah. um, this is Steven Soderbergh's latest movie. Um, this is Claire Foy, right? Claire Foy from The oh, Crown. Okay. Um, it is unnerving and a traumatic psychological horror thriller uh-huh. that succeeds beyond its gimmick. Uh, oh. uh, following the tale of Sawyer Valentini, played, uh, as you mentioned, by Claire Foy, uh, Claire Foy smashingly. She's captivating. Mm. Such um, a she, is, she is pursued by a stalker and she seeks help. And unfortunately, her psychiatrist thinks that she sounds paranoid and crazy, and she is involuntarily admitted into a psychiatric ward. Uh-huh. Um, it's frustrating and infuriating because it's a plausible scenario that you could maybe get caught up in. Yeah. Um, it turns out the mental hospital is running an insurance scam. Oh. They trap you with uh, leading questions, and then hold you when you say something that indicates that you could hurt someone or yourself. Oh. Uh, if your insurance will pay for the treatment, they will hold you however long they can until the insurance stops paying. Uh, once inside, Sawyer is agitated and scared and act very justifi- justifiably acts Crazy out, uh, against the doctors and other patients. Uh, she screams and she shouts. Oh my god, it's a catch-22. Yeah, she tries her best to escape, but then and she talks about the conspiracy against her, yeah. which makes her look all the more crazy, uh, oh. which gives them even further reason to hold her. Um, the real crux of this particular film is when you think uh, is is when she thinks that one of the oddities is yeah. actually her stalker from Boston. Yeah. Mm. That the stalker that she was running away from. Yeah. Uh, he might be, but Sawyer gives some indication that She's hallucinating. She, it might be her fears manifest, manifesting, manifesting okay. as delusions. Okay. So, is she crazy or is she not? Who's the crazy one? Who's the crazy one? So, um, then she gives some further indications that maybe the, the psychiatrists were right to keep her here. Yeah. Um, Unseen keeps playing these creepy hate games with his protagonist and its audience, making us question Sawyer's perspective at every turn. Hmm. Uh, we're never quite sure until about the halfway mark, and then yeah. it becomes a full-on horror show. Okay. Um, it's a lean and low-budget film that uses its unvarnished nature of its, of its footage as uh-huh. an effective tool to induce a sense of immediacy and intimacy. Okay, so the iPhone 7 works? Uh, it works. Um, it's harrowing, it's creepy, and highly recommended. I really, really right. like this. What's next? Next up is uh, Rampage by our good friend Rob. Please tell me it's highly recommended. Um, <laughs> Rampage plays its two winning cards over and over again. Good, okay. Um, the first is giant animal carnage. Uh, yes. Giant alligators or yes. giant monkeys, wolves. wolves, they just tear shit up. It's insane. Um, the second is the comic chemistry between its uh, super B fit cast who bring everyone in on a joke. Uh, mm-hmm. Dwayne, J- Dwayne Rock Johnson's singular charisma, mm-hmm. his way of a one-liner, his built-in special effect that is his unreal physique, yeah. uh, keeps this movie breezy, <laughs> even as you're rolling your eyes sometimes. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it's too big and bloated and a bit too long. Um, uh-huh. Even though it's enjoyably over the top, uh, that in of itself is not enough to sustain you because you fundamentally don't care about any of the characters. Um, admittedly, just one month after we reviewed Tomb Raider, this actually might be one of the best video game movie adaptations ever just because of its accuracy. Yeah, mm. because there's not much 
story to the, begin the with. Uh, Rampage came in the first place, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I heard that later. Jeffrey Dean Morgan played a really good role in this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, The cast superbly quick. All of them were outstanding. It felt a bit like Legends of Tomorrow, to be honest, in the sense that they were, campy, in, a, they were in on the joke and it was campy as well. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, but in. But what do you expect for Rampage, right? What do you expect for Rampage? Yeah. Like? It's a soft recommend, it's a 6 out of 10. Okay. What's um, next? Uh, I forgot to mention Unseen. Unseen was 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, okay. Yeah. So hard and then a soft. E- Ooh, yes. Uh. Next up, I'm going to talk about Supernatural. Hey! Uh, one particular episode of Supernatural. <laughs> Which I, one? I Is it the Scooby-Doo one? It's the Scooby-Doo one. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't watched Supernatural regularly since Season 5. Or at least the Season 5 finale. Okay. But I do occasionally come back for the big meta events episodes. And this was one of the best ones. Okay. Um, for example, in Season 6, there's an episode called The French Mystic where Sam and Dean are transported to an ultimate, alternate universe to escape from demons. Uh, and in this alternate universe, they are known as actors... Jensen Eccles and Jared Padalecki <laughs> who star in a show called Supernatural oh, this, oh, yeah. um, so it's episodes like that that I come back for uh, and in this one the show attempts their most daringly outlandish premise yet by magically transporting the live action duo into an animated episode of Scooby Doo okay. um, the duo teaming up with the Scooby gang while navigating cartoon tropes uh, <laughs> to defeat a ghost is, is just great pure fun uh, what a blast makes sense uh, plus the fact that Dean is a huge Scooby-Doo fanboy okay. is awesome because it makes him the audience proxy and yeah. he guides Sam and Castiel through all the conventions and how they can manipulate the cartoon tropes to their advantage mm. uh, him constantly hitting on Daphne is hilarious too because he's <laughs> such a horn dog um, there is spin off big time because it set a huge rating records for Supernatural um, Supernatural hasn't had this re- de- decent amount of viewers in a long time okay. uh, but wait how many seasons is Supernatural now? it's in its 13th season right now Ooh, I know I know uh, it's this is one of the coolest and funniest episodes in the show's history. Um, not not as good as the recent Scooby Doo and Batman crossover, The Brave and the Bold, oh, which we reviewed in episode two, but it's still entertaining as hell. Okay. And really shows that Supernatural still got it in season thirteen. Not bad, not bad. Uh, the next one I'm gonna talk about is a Netflix movie, but it was actually released in local cinemas. Oh, which one? Uh, it's called The Titan. I didn't watch this. Yes, What's yes. It about? This movie is about Thanos. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> the Man Titan. The Man Titan. Yeah, that's the Man Titan. Uh, the Titan is a science fiction thriller directed by uh, Leonard Ruff, starring mm-hmm. Sam Worthington. In 2048, on an overpopulated Earth, you see, very famous, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and, and ridden by... Oh my god, it's a troll. Uh. It's a troll, I know. Yeah. Uh, in this overpopulated planet, ridden with violent conflict, scientists are looking to turn Saturn's moon into a Titan. new home for okay, humanity. Okay, that makes sense. Because the moon is named Titan. Yeah, and Earth is lacking resources. Okay. So let, let's move, let's terraform. Um, there is this new project spearheaded uh, by Professor Martin uh-huh. and Rick Jensen, who is our protagonist, uh, Sam Worthington. It's yeah. a war pilot who survived for three days in the Syrian desert without food or water. He's chosen to be part of the experiment that forces humans to adapt to the surface of Titan, uh, partly due to, uh, to his past ability to extreme, uh, to extreme survive. Extreme like adverse conditions. Uh. Adverse conditions, okay. exactly. La. The experiment in the beginning seems successful until... He soon starts to evolve. His body starts to evolve in Ooh. very scary ways. So it's a very uh, body oh. horror, the fly kind of thing. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, the premise is very interesting. Okay. Um, the creature, um, the body horror is very, very good. Uh-huh. Uh, unfortunately, the movie is garbage. Though. Oh, uh, damn it! Yeah. <laughs> that uh, was such a good. <laughs> that was such a good premise. I know, I know. The premise was so great. Yep. It's uh, riddled with plot holes. The characters are bland and are remarkable. Mm-hmm. It clunkily steals ideas from movies like The Fly, Avatar, and Prometheus without any of the narrative flourish that any of those aforementioned movies have. Okay. Uh, give this a miss, please. It's a one out of ten. Wow. Yep. Such uh, a good premise, but such a shit movie. Exactly. The second last thing I'll be talking about is a 2018 Malaysian horror movie called Dukun. Oh. It was released earlier this April. We talked about this that time. Yeah. And I mean, to me. Personally. Oh, right, right, yeah. However, it may surprise you that this movie was actually filmed in 2006. What? Yes, this movie has been delayed by 12 years. Wow. Let me fill you in on the back This is a popular <laughs> now kind of situation. Yeah. Um, the film is loosely based on the true story of a gruesome murder of a former Malaysian politician, Datuk Maslan Idris by Mona Fandi. So uh, based oh, on a true story? Based on a true story. Oh, um, this one's mildly popular Malaysia, Malaysian singer, Tan Witch Doctor, murdered this uh, Datuk. Uh. She was convicted in 1993. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically through black magic. Uh, the film was originally stated to be released in 2007, but it was postponed and no official statement was given. Partly due to the high profile nature of the case mm-hmm. and uh, the government uh, you know, shutting it down and Mona Fani's family herself uh, voicing this dissatisfaction over the contents. Okay. After the movie leaked online earlier this year, 
um, the distributor at Astro was like, you know what, fuck it, let's, fuck just, it let's, let's just release it and like, yeah. try to make some money, you know? <laughs> uh, so the the film itself is actually a legal drama, not so much of a horror movie. Okay, okay. Uh, it revolves around the sensational trial of the said Dukun or witch doctor, if you don't understand Malay, named Diana in this movie. Um, thanks to the tales, thanks to tales spread about Diana, she's like this seductive black magic practitioner who has a taste of human flesh. Um, her trial receives wi- widespread public attention. Okay. Like a true celebrity, she has fans and haters. Okay. Uh, those who believe in her supernatural abilities stand up to support her, while some others, including including wit- witnesses who testify against her, are afraid of her after hearing these stories. Mm. In a lot of ways, Dukun is a clever societal mirror uh, for our pension for sensationalism. Okay. It's a bit like the people's OJ. Okay. Yeah, you know, but I mean, Malaysian style. But Malaysian style. And about which yeah. doctor. And it's yeah. horror. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, it seems that people would rather have a conversation about an embellished story than actually delve into the facts. The facts, yeah. Okay. Um, unfortunately, the story of the movie is a lot more comparing than the story in the movie. Oh. Um, that's not good. Yeah. Narratively and technically, this is as bland as boring as it comes. Um, the acting is quite exceptional though. Um, the main character, Datin Siri Umi Aida, is quite, 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 quite good. Okay. Uh, she but this was back in 2006. 2006. La. La. So she elevates this whole thing. Okay. Uh, the controversy around this movie has got garnered a lot of hype. Uh, unfortunately, it's not warranted. La. And I, people wouldn't have missed anything if it was just like okay. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, the last thing I'm going to talk about is a combination of three of my favourite things. Go ahead. Uh, a comic book adaptation. Uh huh. A musical and a horror. Oh my god, I know what this is. This is uh, Riverdale doing Carrie the musical. <laughs> I knew it. Uh... Right, okay. Um, I stopped watching Riverdale midway to season same, 1. Same, all of us. Yep. Did yeah, the yeah. same thing. Uh, but I'll tune in anytime a show does a musical episode because I love musical episodes. Me too. And their musical based on Carrie was amazing. Like, throughout the episode, dramatic character beats unfolded perfectly in song as reconciliations and revelations mm. were, uh, were revealed. Yeah. Uh, I'm not up to date with current storyline developments or character dynamics, but like any musical should, it filled me in through verse, song, and dance. Okay. So I, I got it immediately. Okay. Uh, it also helped that everyone played the type, and while some weren't as good singers or dancers as others, everyone performed admirably. Okay. Um, the compositions were fantastic, and it really made me want to jump back in, but I won't. <laughs> Thank uh, God. It's, a, it's as great as an episode can get, and it's, uh, it's good enough to make me like Riverdale again. Okay. But I'm not going to jump back in. Lah. Uh, also, I just realised by watching Riverdale again that the guy that plays Chuck Clayton, Jordan Calloway, uh-huh. is the same guy that plays Khalil on Black Lightning, mm. and he's equally annoying on both shows. Oh man! Oh boy! Yeah. yeah. Uh, but if you are not into Riverdale anymore, or if you or if you are and haven't caught up, um, carry the musical. Uh, I think the episode title is "Remember the Night" is really, really fantastic. Uh, just uh, on the on the spectrum of musical episodes that shows have done, this yeah. is near the top. Oh wow! Like I rank it, I rank it just like just below Buffy. Okay. And above the Flash and Supergirl. Oh okay. wow! Yeah. That's a high recommend then. Yeah, okay. because the Flash and Supergirl didn't really delve into the musical musicality of it because half of it was uh, yeah. 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 yeah okay okay. Yeah. But this went all the way in. Uh. This went all the way in. Bro. All right. All right. Hard recommend, uh? Hard recommend. This all is right. a, yeah. This is a ten out of ten for that episode. Okay. I don't know Riverdale as a show. Apparently, season two has been quite underwhelming yeah. from fans. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Well, oh well. I asked my ex student. Uh, well, to me, season one is already underwhelming. Yeah, after, yeah. after a while. Uh. After a while. After a while. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna let Isa dump on a series of unfortunate events for a while. Yeah, so. Uh, season two uh, just came out, right? After, yeah, after quick hits, we are this, these are the hits and this is the miss section, right? Yeah. So, uh, I really enjoyed season one. Uh, if you don't know what a series of unfortunate events is, is it a Netflix series? Yes, it's it Netflix, is. Right? Netflix original. So it's a Netflix original, um, and of course, named after the, the book, the book that is written after. Mm-hmm. Um, you season watched one, the whole season one, right? Yeah, I watched the whole season one. And I thought it was really good. Uh, but the thing that annoyed me about season one, mm-hmm. uh, which I have to say was, was a small, much smaller part, was basically the entirety of the first three episodes of season two that I watched. Yikes. Right? Uh, so, new Patrick Harris as Count Olaf is one of the most annoying things on television ah. I have seen in recent times. Yeah. But this is not a good kind of annoying. No, la. this is not a good okay. kind of annoying. This is not the Dwight kind of annoying. Yeah, no, this is... Oh my god, I don't even know what to mean. So uh, basically, uh, we, we largely have a three episode rule, right? Give something a chance. Yeah. Give it three episodes. Yeah. Uh, if, if you think there's something that you like in these three episodes, then go ahead and watch yeah, yeah, it. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. drop it. Because there's no time for that. Yeah. Right? There's plenty of other things to watch. Exactly. So I wanted to drop it out of the first episode. But three episode rule. Yeah. Uh, and what and happened after three episodes? Unless you really, 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 really love New Patrick Harris. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not worth your time. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, generally, um, 
it's come to the point at, at least for season one you were very invested in the story and how the children did mm. right uh, there was a story moving forward mm-hmm. but in the three episodes that I watched so far uh, Olaf's antics takes over the entirety of the series oh shit Right, he, so much like so, a Johnny Depp thing. Yes, wow. exactly. It dominates every time New Patrick Harris is on on screen. He dominates the scene, yeah. right? So much so to the point that you don't see any other actors, and okay. it is extremely annoying. Okay, right, and there's a lot of those scenes, and it happens all the time, you know. So, um, which is kind of sad because I really do enjoy what the the child actors are doing. Mm. I think they've done spectacularly well for season one, and in very very small moments they had in season two as well just trying to deal with the ridiculousness that, that their lives awesome. have become. Uh, it's been great, but just overshadowed by okay. a very overbearing uh, presence of new people. Okay, so Oh, it. darn. I guess in conclu- conclusion, you can give season 2 a miss, but if you haven't seen season 1, it might be worth a shot. Yeah. 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 Um, how do you be handling the pull list this week? Pull list? I only got one thing only. Uh, yeah, um, Hadi is a big fan of Good Omens. So yeah, I mean, uh, in memory of Terry Pratchett, in pre- memory of Terry Pratchett, and also there will be a, a, and, uh, a TV adaptation coming TV out. TV right? adaptation Very coming good. out this year. Showrun by Neil Gaiman, of all yes. people. Yes, I mean he was the co-writer for yeah. this book. But he's never showrun a a, a, sh- a, mo- a, a TV show, show a TV before. Show before so yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, exactly. So I want to see what he does. I mean, uh, there was this, he he did a guest appearance on The Big Bang Theory recently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's quite cool, quite interesting. Although I hate that show. No, no, me too. Yeah. Because it's ridiculous. I just wanted to say, I just watched it because of New Game. New Game, yeah. He only had like two scenes. Uh. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, and, but what is it about full, uh, Good Omens that has left such an indelible mark on you? I mean, both of them, first of all, both of them are my favorite favorite authors. Mm. Right? Terry mm. Pratchett is my number one, New Game comes in and close number two. Yeah. Um, uh, and this was a very good marriage of both their writing styles. Mm. Very seamlessly woven in together. And you could tell from just reading the book how good friends they were. Yeah. Okay. Not only creatively, but, you know, um, out, I mean, just personally. Mm-hmm. And you could, I mean, the characters were so well written. Uh, the angels and their, 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 the, the tropes that angels usually have. Yeah. You know, and their shortfalls. Yeah. Uh, and their extremisms. Yeah. You know, on both sides, the angels and the demons were all very well fleshed out. Mm-hmm. And the Dark human... comedic as well. Yeah, Dark exactly. Yeah. Correct. And the human characters become even more prominent because of this. Mm. You know, and you have the whole Antichrist. Uh, feeling sympathy for the Antichrist yeah. is not something that happens yeah, yeah. all the time. Nope. Yeah. Right? But you kind of root for the Antichrist in this book. It's the Thanos? <laughs> yeah, yeah, in a way. Yeah. The Antichrist is like some 10 year old boy. La, yeah. Who yeah. has like special powers. La. Yeah. Uh, overall, I mean, I read this book a long time ago and recently because of the, 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 the TV series was going to be coming out. Mm. Or is it a mini series? I think it's um, a TV series because they, they announced yeah. season one. Okay. So that means yeah. there will be a season two. So yeah, so so this new TV series that's coming out, I just recently reread it. That's why I put it in the pull list. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Michael Sheen starring, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Michael Sheen, right? Those stuff, yeah. Fucking vampire, fucking werewolf. Yeah. He plays the vampire yeah. in uh, in Twilight and he plays the werewolf in Underworld. Yeah. yeah. And he's also a master of sex. And he's and also he's the master of sex, <laughs> correct. And he's married to... Holy shit, who is he married to? I don't know. I don't know. Famous actress. I don't follow the celebrity gossip, bro. No, I, I don't. Never mind. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> but yeah, so I re- highly recommend it if you want something easy to read because it's not mm. that long. Yeah. It's like 200 plus pages, honey. Uh, this is a certi- certifi- certifi- satirical book yeah. and a certifiable classic. Yeah, it, it, is. Of it, is. Our genre it is. It is. It is. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it's a good gateway if you want to get into both either Terry Pratchett stuff or Neil Gaiman stuff. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah uh, good point. And we've run like a, a very tight ship this week, so yeah, we actually that. have like um like yeah. a couple of minutes to spare. And I just kind of wanted to address something that is a major genre property that we don't talk about. Yeah, what? Um, the this is a short question that I want you guys to answer. Yes. Why did we stop watching The Walking Dead? Oh, <laughs> yeah. The Walking Dead recently ended its latest season. Its latest season, yeah. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I don't care. Don't care. And there was a point in time where in pop culture, it was so cool to like The Walking Dead. Yeah, I know. And right. now it's cool to hate The Walking Dead. And I mean, why, I don't hate it. Why has it become that way? La? Okay. I stopped relatively... Like, just last year. Yeah. In fact, when Negan was introduced. Yeah. Right? Negan was a character that I was looking forward to because I read the comics and Negan is one of the best villains mm. in comic book history. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, like his uh, sadisticness, his, uh, his warped, uh, uh, warped uh, sense of honor. Yeah, his philosophy. You know? His philosophy is yeah. all just fucked up, right? Yeah. 
and it melts very well into that world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So to see him come and again Jeffrey D. Morgan, great actor. great actor. Yeah. And his portrayal of Negan was actually not bad. Yeah. I enjoyed his the the, the scene where he kills Glenn. Spoiler alert. Sorry, you should know by now. I mean, it's a long time. Ago. Yeah, a long time ago. Right? <laughs> Statues of Liberty. You know? over. They've made sketches on SNL about this. <laughs> yeah, <story>. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and when he kills Glenn, you know, and how perfectly it mirrors the comics. Mm. You know, I really like that scene. But, but then it was just something that was missing. Yeah. Like after the episode it felt empty. It didn't feel as satisfying to watch The Walking Dead anymore. It became tiring to watch yeah. it. Yeah. And it, it felt like just a repetition right? of uh, old tro- um, not tropes are uh, old arcs. Old arcs, yeah. Um they just th- reskinned. Exactly. Yeah. Um Carl no who's who's Carl's dad? Um, Rick. Rick, Rick Rick Grimes. <laughs> Carl's Who's dead. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I I know that Carl's dead like, because it, there's a major meme about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But like, Rick appears to just uh, repeat his arc over and over season, again. Yeah. Over and over again. He, he becomes Pharaoh. And then he becomes he civilized. Then he becomes Pharaoh again. Because he realizes for the greater good, I need to be you know, more yeah. vicious. Yeah. And then he rediscovers mm. his humanity and then on oh, oh, yeah. and on so and th- on. So that's and on. why I stopped watching because it felt like I've seen this before. I dropped off slightly before the Negan arc because I was bored by its illogicalness and I was already tired of its repetitions mm, okay it didn't offer anything new for me same and, and part of it is because this is the only show on EMC that garners huge ratings so they refuse to cancel it or yep. give them an end date yeah uh, like for example the Breaking Bad guys or the Mad Men people um, had a definite end in mind and they insisted upon it mm-hmm. and they could do that because of their low ratings yeah uh, so they could tell a finite story The Walking Dead feels like it should be a finite story yeah. uh, but much of the comic books is going on and on much and to, to depreciating returns yeah. in my opinion yeah. I dropped it at like season 4 uh-huh. so way before you guys yeah. but for pretty much the same reasons right uh, after a while I really Tiring, right? couldn't deal with Rick as a character Yeah. right and it just felt I, I got the exact same feeling you got right mm. that watching it didn't it was very empty yeah you know, there wasn't any any sort of like never like wow moment, arts, right? yeah, right. And there were no wow moments, yeah. 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 By the time we hit season four, I was just like, really? Like, yeah. are we doing this again? Yeah. yeah. You know, it's the same thing over and over again. And quite honestly, there's only so much zombie killing I want to see. Correct. Uh, yeah. That isn't attached to a story. I mean, uh, they did. I mean, the focus became less on the zombies, yeah, more on the people, people la. But at the same time, also losing your humanity as an arc. Oh, as a can theme, only run so long. Can only run for so long, like, and it can't be your only theme, like, <laughs> especially if you want to run for like twenty five seasons. It's you know? because they lose their humanity, gain their humanity, yeah. lose their you know the same thing again and again. They cannot. Uh yeah. So <laughs> rinse, recycle, repeat. Yeah. Um. Hopefully it will change because they've recently got a new showrunner that will be taking over next season, oh. and she's promised a drastic, drastic change, a time jump, um, a huge uh, new environment for them. Uh, with even new characters and they won't be focusing on Red Grime so much. Okay. If if the reviews turn out to be good, I might consider jumping back in. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Next year. And uh, that's been this month of uh, genre equality. Not bad. Tight show. Tight show. Tight show. Tight show. Uh, we'll jump in next month on uh, June the first. Yes. yes. We'll be coming out then. Uh, we'll be talking about Deadpool 2 Which is probably the biggest title yeah. this month uh, We'll be talking about Fahrenheit 451 Oh, uh, Michael Jordan, Michael Michael Jordan is back Again. <laughs> uh, Will Solo be good? Will it not? Who knows? Trailer looks interesting Trailer looks interesting I'll be covering um, some movies like I Kill Giants yeah. um, Cargo, which is a Martin Freeman uh, Australian yes. zombie movie yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'll be recapping That movie. was a short, right? That became a movie, right? The short was incredible Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll be recapping the season finale of The Flash and Arrow uh, I'll be talking about a new show called The Terror, which I really, really like. I haven't started that. Uh, and I recently read uh, The Children of Blood and Bone, Ooh. which is a very, very good uh, young adult novel by a Nigerian author. Uh, fantastic stuff. Yeah, I saw about, that uh, you've been Black raving about this for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, great stuff. So, uh, we'll see you in June. Uh, till then, this has been Hit Zero. I'm Hadi. I'm Aisa. Catch you then. Bye-bye.